The essay by Charles Lamb, titled, Barrenness of the Imaginative Faculty in the Productions of Modern Art, critically examines the creative approach of painters during his time, with a particular focus on storytelling in art. Lamb acknowledges Hogarth as an exception but questions whether any other painter in the modern era has effectively let the subject guide them instead of imposing their own arrangement. The essay raises the issue of whether any painter has been strongly influenced by the main or side points of a subject, to the extent that changing it would distort the intended message. It also questions whether modern art has produced anything comparable to Titian's ability to bring together different times in his painting, Ariadne, at the National Gallery. The critique extends to the detailed portrayal of subjects in modern art, emphasizing that not every detail visible at a moment needs to be included in a painting. Lamb points out the unnecessary complexity added to the miracle of Belshazzar's feast, questioning the inclusion of common panic and fear in the depiction. The essay further explores the role of imagination in art, arguing that great painters reached true conclusions by making clever changes and not depicting everything seen by an indifferent eye. The examples of Raphael's, Building of the Ark, and Veronese's, Marriage at Cana, are used to illustrate the importance of selective portrayal in art. The essay critiques modern art for its lack of imaginative faculty, emphasizing the need for artists to focus on essential elements and let the subject guide them creatively. It questions whether contemporary painters have achieved the same level of storytelling and imaginative depth as the great masters of the past. Titian's Ariadne Lamb commends Titian's imaginative spirit in the painting, Ariadne, at the National Gallery, emphasizing the artist's unique ability to merge two different times. He describes Bacchus, born in fire, hurling himself at the Cretan, with a reeling satyr route, creating a simultaneous effect of intense presence and profound desolation. Lamb argues that Titian's work goes beyond the surface narrative, capturing the complexities of emotions and time. Raphael's Presentation of Eve to Adam Lamb compares a coarse print of Raphael's painting depicting the presentation of Eve to Adam to contemporary expectations. He suggests that a modern artist might have focused on tempering human passion and acknowledging the divine blessing. However, Raphael's work, according to Lamb, captures a moment free from conflicting emotions, with Adam expressing wonder at the created miracle rather than engaging in passionate or spiritual reactions. Depiction of Belshazzar's Feast Lamb introduces an anecdote related to a prank during a dinner hosted by the Prince Regent, drawing parallels with the painting of Belshazzar's Feast. He criticizes modern artists for faltering in imagination by populating the scene, suggesting that the narrative focus should be on the confusion, excitement, and fake alarms among the courtiers rather than unnecessary details. Challenges to the motto Lamb discusses the artworks of a contemporary artist, acknowledging their quality in the material sublime but critiquing the faltering imagination when it comes to populating the towering structures. The artist's courage appears to wane, leading Lamb to question the imaginative capacity of modern artists in fully realizing their grand concepts. Narrative Elements in Art Throughout the essay, Lamb emphasizes the importance of narrative elements in art. He argues that artists should be guided by the subject and allow the narrative to dictate their representation. Lamb's criticism revolves around the perceived lack of imaginative engagement with narratives in modern art, contrasting this with the achievements of masters like Titian and Raphael. Lamb's Evaluation of Modern Artists Lamb expresses skepticism about the imaginative prowess of modern artists, raising questions about their ability to approach narratives with depth and originality. He wonders if any contemporary painter, aside from Hogarth, possesses the capacity to be strongly influenced by a subject to the point where it guides their artistic expression. Comparison with Ancient Art Lamb frequently refers to ancient and classical artworks as benchmarks for imaginative narrative depictions. He contrasts the approach of modern artists with the subtlety and depth found in the works of masters like Titian, Raphael, and Poussin, suggesting that contemporary artists lack the same level of sophistication. Balance between human and divine elements Lamb explores the theme of balance in artistic representation, especially concerning human and divine emotions. 
He critiques modern artists for not adequately capturing the simultaneous complexity of emotions in narrative scenes, emphasizing the need for restraint and elevation of more spiritual aspects. Pantomime Hoax Anecdote Lamb employs an anecdote about a pantomime hoax during a royal dinner to highlight the element of surprise and chaos. He suggests that the chaos caused by the transparency at the Prince Regent's dinner is analogous to the confusion depicted in Belshazzar's feast. The comparison underscores the importance of capturing the essence of the narrative moment in art. Artists' Courage and Imagination Lamb questions the courage of a contemporary artist when faced with imaginative challenges, particularly in populating towering structures. He challenges the artist's imaginative capacity, suggesting that while they excel in certain aspects of the material sublime, they falter when it comes to fully realizing imaginative narratives. Observations on Subjectivity Lamb's commentary is subjective, reflecting his personal preferences and biases towards certain artistic styles. His standards for imaginative art are based on classical ideals, and he laments the perceived decline in artistic imagination rather than embracing evolving artistic styles. Integration of Anecdotes The essay integrates anecdotes, such as the pantomime hoax and the dinner at the pavilion, to illustrate and emphasize Lamb's points about imagination and narrative in art. These anecdotes serve as real-world examples supporting his arguments. Supernatural Elements and Common Panic Lamb questions the portrayal of supernatural elements in paintings, such as the ghostly handwriting on the wall in Belshazzar's feast. He argues that unnecessary complications are introduced by trying to depict a miracle involving a thousand courtiers, suggesting that the immediate scene during such divine events would appear as masses and indistinct to the actual eyewitnessing it. Selective Detail in Paintings The essay emphasizes the importance of selective detail in paintings, contrasting it with the detailed depictions of everyday objects and anatomy in Michelangelo's Falling Angels and Sinners. Lamb contends that during moments of divine horror or judgment, the immediate scene would appear as masses and indistinct to the actual eye, and there would be no time or reason to focus on detailed anatomical features. Depiction of Miracles in Art Lamb argues against unnecessarily complicating miracles in art and suggests that artists should focus on the essential elements that convey the message. He questions the need to portray a miracle involving a thousand courtiers when the message was directed at one person, Belshazzar, and there is no indication that the appearance was seen by others. Imagination and Divine Fear The essay explores the distinction between human fear and divine fear in artistic depictions. Lamb contends that the immediate scene during divine horror would appear as masses and indistinct to the actual eye, and the focus should be on conveying the unique nature of divine fear rather than including unnecessary details. Role of Imagination in Ancient and Modern Art Lamb asserts that imaginative faculty is more prominent in ancient art, pointing to examples like Raphael's interpretation of the shipbuilder's craft and the depiction of Lazarus breaking free from his grave clothes. He questions whether modern art has reached the same level of imaginative depth and storytelling as ancient art. Criticizing the trend in modern art Throughout the essay, Lamb maintains a critical stance toward the trends in modern art, particularly in terms of storytelling, imaginative depth, and the selective portrayal of subjects. He advocates for a return to the principles followed by the great masters in elevating seemingly mundane subjects. Depiction of Historical Scenes Lamb comments on the artistic representation of historical scenes, particularly the painting of the Marriage at Cana by Veronese and Titian. He highlights the vibrant details in such paintings, including the texture and color of garments, which are appreciated during moments of celebration. However, he contrasts this with the portrayal of supernatural or divine events, suggesting that such scenes would appear as masses and indistinct to the actual eye. Comparison with Literary Elements Lamb draws parallels between visual art and literature. 
he emphasizes the importance of conveying a story or message in art, much like a narrative in literature. The essay suggests that artists should focus on essential elements that contribute to the overall narrative rather than getting lost in unnecessary details. Handling of Miracles in Painting The essay addresses the treatment of miracles in painting, using the example of Belshazzar's feast. Lamb questions the need to complicate the miraculous event, pointing out that the focus should be on the impact on Belshazzar rather than attempting to depict the phenomenon as seen by a thousand courtiers. Artistic skill and imagination. Lamb praises the imaginative skill of the great masters, particularly Raphael, in elevating mundane subjects to loftiness. He contrasts this with what he perceives as a lack of imagination in modern art, especially in the depiction of supernatural or divine themes. Role of Imagination in Divine Events Lamb explores the role of imagination in depicting divine events. He contends that the immediate scene during such events would overwhelm the senses, making sight and hearing more of a feeling. Artists should capture the essence of divine fear rather than focusing on detailed anatomical features or unnecessary details. Comparative analysis with literary devices The essay employs literary devices and comparisons, such as referring to the story of Daniel and Belshazzar's feast. Lamb interprets the text and questions the necessity of complicating the miracle in art, aligning it with the narrative focus found in literature. This is how the essay critiques the trends in modern art, emphasizing the importance of imagination, storytelling, and selective detail in conveying the essence of supernatural or divine events in visual art. Lamb advocates for a return to the principles followed by the great masters in their approach to artistic representation.